Hello, and welcome back to our Star Trek review and discussion. I'm here with Emma this week because Emmett was not able to do it this week. Hello. Hello. I, I'm this week's Emmett. Yeah, so I just pulled her out from the kitchen there. She's getting herself a, uh, a snack of toast, and I've got her in to talk about Star Trek. Because you know what? We've, I've, I'm so used to talking about this show uh, with someone that I didn't really want to do it alone. <laughs> And I also thought it would be pretty funny because, you know, considering Emmett's not here this week um, and everyone's probably distracted by the uh, Star Wars uh, Mandalorian season finale, <laughs> maybe we'll uh, just do a fun video where we talk about the episode, but Ema's never actually seen it before. Ema's never seen Star Trek Discovery before. No, I've never seen any Star Trek. Yeah. well, <laughs> I'm going in completely dry. Well, the, the people who are really... Uh, big Star Trek fans and they sort of they would be on Emmett's side usually because Emmett's, Emmett's seen more Star Trek than me this is just completely noob city here Yeah. but uh, at the same time we analyse TV so we will analyse this episode right Emma this is a second part of a two part episode uh, what did you make of this? because you obviously didn't see we, Emma didn't even watch the first half of this no I didn't well it came up a little preview on previously on Star Trek yeah so you actually probably did see most well, of it well I saw that there was some dude who looked like he was showing them the entrance to Narnia yeah. in the snow in a tweed jacket and I thought that is jarring <laughs> I did not expect to see that guy in Star Trek um, but I I mean you, I think you've caught when we were watching you said you'd caught me in the past when I was watching season one or two yeah. that you'd seen the like the Terran universe before yeah I knew there was a parallel world where everybody was a bad guy so yeah like they're really like sort of like really really violent and like yeah, yeah masochistic tendencies yeah so uh, I put two and two together and hopefully got four that uh, you know that's where that guy was leading them to is back to that mirror world as it were yeah, um, yeah. Uh, especially that was kind of confirmed to me whenever your woman the uh, the the main woman who was Philippa Georgia uh, yeah Philippa mm -hmm. um, she came back and and uh, Michael Burnham was still there so I was like okay so that wasn't that Michael Burnham yeah okay I, yeah, was, like... I was right <laughs> but I will say for someone who really didn't know what was going on, I enjoyed the episode. Uh, I was I was along for the ride. It yeah. was entertaining. You found it compelling. I find it compelling. Uh, you know, and I, I feel like that's a, the result of well written characters and a well written show, well written action. Yeah, and also like it's it, even like whenever they go go and do this uh, alternate universe thing, they really do throw everything at it. Um, it is a much different look of a show and everything. Like okay, they <coughs> bless you, bless you. Clear the drool off my son's mouth. Uh, you, know the you, you know the drill by now, folks. There's a baby here. Yeah. Anytime he was in a video, there's a baby nearby. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's the thing. Uh, Not even always my baby. Like I just keep finding them. Yeah, they just find it everywhere. Like, mm. um, that's, uh, talking of that, Philippa Giorgio and Michael Burnham uh, <laughs> finding babies. <laughs> but uh, basically, yeah. So it, it come. It turned out at the end of this episode that this was all a test for her to sort of see where she should go in the universe. Mm -hmm. um, so. What did you think about that idea that this is like about being tested like this? It was very like Anubis, isn't it? Anubis, the the Egyptian god of death who wears people's heart on a feather, mm -hmm. um, basically to decide. Yeah, being it even said being weighed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, that's what I it definitely conjured up that imagery of ancient Egyptian gods, and you know, uh, Judgment Day and things like that. Mm -hmm. That, as you said, they even used the term being weighed, and mm -hmm. I think. Uh, that was really cool. It was quite epic. Um, yeah, and they said that she's gonna now because obviously she made some choices in the um, in, in in the world that she that she didn't make before. So she actually was able to have more empathy and sort of save Saru as well. Because mm -hmm. um, when he went through the Vaharai, did you did, did while I was watching it the first time around? Did you catch any of that Vaharai? No, stuff? but I took it to be like a puberty of sorts. Yeah. So <laughs> Basically, on the Kelpians' home planet, they uh, go through a thing called Vraharai, but when they go through it, they get cold. Um, and that's in the Terran universe, too, that the, the Terrans cold them when they go through it. Why? And they Well, they've been led to believe by a superior, superior race mm -hmm. on their planet that they are 
um, that, that that's just what happens. That's the order of things. But actually what happens is whenever they do, and they're, they're very timid and sort of they are the prey, they're meek prey. But whenever they go through Vihara, they, they lose this thing called ganglia. And when they, when, when they go through this process of change, they actually turn more into the predator. So the reason why oh they were conditioned they were conditioned by a high, by a different species on their planet to believe they were, they were the prey yeah because they were a threat otherwise yeah, so they were cold yeah. before going through Bahari and it, wow and, and in so the, they were properly oppressed people because they were feared oh hundred percent and, and oh, that's and, really interesting and and then um in what do you call it um in the Terran universe obviously the mm-hmm. the the Kelpians are the slaves and obviously they've been treated the same way by the Terrans like they 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 call them and that's why Georgia that's one of the biggest parts of how she changed is that she wasn't going to she couldn't sit by and have this Kelpian Saru who she come to know so well in the in the, in the prime universe she couldn't she couldn't come uh, and just let him die or no, let, she couldn't let him be cold and she couldn't let him be treated poorly so yeah, she, yeah. she she formed a relationship with him and then eventually told him about Vahare and then the um the guardian of uh, the temporal gate at the end the guardian of what was it the guardian of future or the guardian of something like that yeah, I don't know. yeah um, I, i'm pretty sure he's probably been in star trek before so if you I, I got that impression that when he revealed who he was it was we were meant to be like oh that's that guy but i didn't know who he was well i just i don't remember what his title was but i remember thinking it was a cool title yeah yeah, yeah. it was uh it was guardian of something fortune god i don't know something like that um so basically uh basically yeah so basically what i'm saying is um, is that the Kelpians now, what he said was that the, based on her doing that with Saru, Saru will now, I don't even know if he had a name in that universe, but basically he'll, he'll disseminate that information now across everywhere. So, and then basically alluded to the idea of the, like a revolt happening with the Kelpians uh, in that universe now. Um, or at least the Kelpians will stop, you know, they'll start going through Vahare at the very least. Mm. Um, they'll yeah. learn about themselves. Yeah, exactly. Um, what did you think about the whole like torture uh I I, pers- I personally I did believe that the the, the the Terran Michael Burnham I did believe that that Terran Michael Burnham was changed. Did you? I didn't. Didn't but you? The, but well, I I have watching it without the context of all the other episodes that you've seen. Yeah, but you were right, and I was wrong. Like I I thought that maybe I I, I thought that maybe Giorgio would have would have got through to her somehow, even though because because Giorgio is a Terran. Yeah. So that, that I don't know if you knew that, but that Giorgio is originally from that universe, and came into the Prime Universe. Oh, the yeah. Giorgio from the Prime Universe died really early in season one. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, right. So so I think you might have told me that before. Yeah. So so that Giorgio is actually from that universe. That's why she, all this temporal shift and stuff is going crazy with her making a her, her, you know her, her her whole face is turning into like yeah, a she, hexagon she, and she stuff. She glitched. She was glitching. Um, so the reason for that is because she's from a different universe and they've traveled through to different times and stuff. Mm-hmm. So basically, um, the fact that she's from that universe, I was like, well, she's changed. So maybe Michael Burnham has changed as well, but obviously not. Well, I mean, how extreme Michael Burnham was as well. I mean, what was it? She said something about... Do you know who Lorca was, by the way? They kept saying Lorca. I'm guessing Michael Burnham's boyfriend. Jason Isaacs. Oh, Remember he was in season <laughs> yeah, one? yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's in everything these days. Not as not as much as Giancarlo Esposito's in everything. No, that's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's essentially English Giancarlo Esposito. Yeah. Well, there you go. Was there anything else you want to talk about the episode? Like, I, I don't really. I'm not going to really get into the, the the crew dynamics and stuff at the end, like the storyline at the end. Well, I just wanted to focus on the the parallel universe with you because I'm not, I don't want to overflow you. Yeah. I like the aesthetics of the parallel universe. Mm-hmm. How they made the characters look different. Yeah. Um, like the, you know, the ginger lady. Detma. Like, no, not not her. Oh, Tilly. Tilly, yeah, mm-hmm. she's got really mad curly hair in yeah, yeah, Origin yeah. World, and she just like perfectly straight, sleek hair. And I, I, yeah, I, it's always jar- to be honest, with you, that's jarring to me. Tilly is jarring to me. I'm, I'm not sure. Like, I do like I do like the Terran universe in general. Yeah. Um, it's very over the top in general. I I like the design of the Terran world. It's very over the top. Um. I mean, their uniforms are very clearly not metal, but every time they go like this, it's like, you know, as if they're hitting metal. Uh, it's very sort of panto, you know? Yeah, I quite like the uniforms. I thought that that was definitely a look. I'd wear that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yeah. So I, I thought it was all right. I find Tilly, to be honest with you, I find that very jarring. I think that version of Tilly is very jarring to me. Because mm. she's usually a very, like, she's like the stereotypical bubbly sort of 
character, she but seems she's almost she's like a teenager, is she? She, she's well, young. she's well, she she acts. I don't think she's a teenager, but she's she definitely she acts youthful. Youthful, yeah. yes. But she's been recently promoted to first officer on the ship, even though what, she, in Origin World or in in, in the uh, curly haired Tilly or straight haired Tilly. Curly, so yeah. in the Prime World, so, yeah. She's been a uh, little burp there. Um, he's <laughs> uh, yeah. So she's she's been uh, promoted to first officer, which is really controversial because the character wasn't even like wasn't even a commander like the character was a real low rank of ensign so okay. so it's really strange that they would make her the anyway we're not getting into that right okay. guys well there, your word for it. <laughs> there's there's some of Ema's thoughts on the episode i personally really like this episode um i know steven said in the, in the comments last week that he doesn't like the terran universe um i i can see what he means i, I prefer the i prefer the uh the prime universe definitely um but i something about the over the t- over the top design I don't mind visiting there every now and again. Uh, and the idea that everyone is just evil is also an interesting idea. As you said, it's a bit panto. But how, how does society fun. survive? <laughs> like, I, just, I, I, just, I think a world where just everyone is evil wouldn't... Like, all the humans anyway, the Terrans. I don't think that would... I don't think that would just... I don't think that would be a real thing. Surely you, it's not, though. Surely it's just that group of them. You yeah, know, well... Like, that, they're well, em- th- empirists. I don't know if that's the word. Well, they're, yeah, well, they're in the Empire, yeah. But, yeah. I, but I'm, I, I, I believe it's like every, all the humans, that's what they are, Terrans, because of, you know, from Terra Firma. Okay. Um, Terra Firma! You laughed when you saw that. In, in, the, in, in the recap, she went through the door and then they're all just standing there. Terra Firma! Um, yeah. That, that, that was I was funny. just like, what's happening here? Yeah, it was just like, that recap really, like, was so confused when I'm sure for you. But anyway, guys, there we go. Emma will be back next week uh, for episode 11 of season 3 of Star Trek Discovery. We're getting near the end. We're going to find out what caused the burn, and I can't wait. And I have no idea what you're talking about. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye.